So my name is Lawrence Breidenbach. I'm from ETH Zurich and IC3, the Initiative for Cryptocurrencies and Contracts. And this right here is my buddy. Hi, I'm Tyler. I'm with Cornell University. I'm also with IC3. And uh, today we're going to be talking to you about uh, Lib Submarine, um, a new smart contract library that you can use to temporarily hide uh, transactions on Ethereum and hopefully defeat front runners if you saw Phil's talk yesterday. So a little bit about the background. All right, here we go. Yeah, so this is based on uh, research uh, we did at IC3 uh, with my colleagues. Yeah, it's working. Phil Dion, Florian Traumer, and Ari Jules. Uh, so if you're curious about the intricacies, you can check out that stuff. Um, but today, I'm not going to bore you with that. We're going to dive right into um, sort of the motivation. And then uh, Tyler is going to tell you a little bit about how um, this works. So why would you want to temporarily hide transactions on Ethereum? Well, basically, you want to hide transactions whenever you worry about somebody else seeing the transaction and doing something evil with the knowledge that that transaction will be included later. So uh, the typical use case would be to prevent front running, but it's also useful for things like sealed bid auctions and things like that. Um, On-chain voting is another case where, where you might want to hide the fact uh, that you're participating in a vote. Um, fair token offerings, challenge protocols, and maybe soon your dApp. So let me motivate this a little bit with an example in case uh, that you want to know more about how this front running attack would look like. Uh, and I'm going to be specifically talking about an example where we have a DEX contract similar to, say, Bancor or Uniswap that is acting as a sort of automated market maker. Um, and so what happens here is that we have our user um, who wants to buy some tokens, say. And so she broadcasts a buy transaction to the Ethereum network. Um, and now that, na that transaction gets propagated on the network, sits in the mempool for some time, and is finally included in a block, at which point it sort of reaches our DEX smart contract. Now, what a malicious user or a front runner can do is that he can use this window of time, this gap between when the transaction is broadcast and when it is included in the block, knowing that the transaction will be included in a future block, but quickly sneak in in front of the transaction and sort of profit at our user's expense. So the way that a front runner might be able to do this is, uh, in the simplest case, by simply sandwiching this transaction. So the front runner would place a buy order in front of our user's buy order. This buy order would drive up the price. Then our user's buy order would arrive, buying at a higher price than uh, at which it would have bought if it hadn't been for the front runner. And then the front runner can immediately sell again, basically pocketing the spread and uh, benefiting at our poor user's expense here. And this attack is far from theoretical. So there's actually a blog post out there where somebody kind of computed that they could make like, I don't know, I think tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of dollars a year just running this against Bancor. And with the proliferation of more and more DEXs, this becomes more and more of a problem. So at this point, I'm going to hand over to Tyler, and he's going to tell you about how we can prevent this with Lib Submarine. Thanks, Lawrence. So uh, if you notice, the key problem that we have here is that there is a period of time in between a, the time when a user wants to broadcast a transaction to the network and when it's actually hardened into a block and like canonically in the chain. So in that period of time, an attacker can see this and then futz with the order. So we were thinking about how do we solve this? Well, what's the key insight? Well we can hide this transaction maybe and prevent users from, or attackers from seeing this transaction and then they don't know that the transaction exists so then they can't front run it. So how do we do this? Well, we use a technique called a commit reveal scheme, but a normal commit reveal scheme can't flow, uh, hide the flow of money, right? Because the flow of money in Ethereum has to be public. So how do we deal with this? Well, we, we do some cryptographic ma magic and we make this submarine address and so then what we do is we send this money to the submarine address in the form of a commit. And then it just looks like a simple send of ether to uh, any address on the network, which is actually some like small percentage, like something like 2% of all transactions on the network are actually simple sends. So this is actually a lot of transactions that you can hide in. And then later we can reveal the existence of this commit and sort of uh, an attacker can see this reveal, but by the time that they see this reveal, the commit already happened, and so they can't insert their own commit ahead of that commit. So we can enforce an ordering of transactions for commits. And then later, the, the smart contract can go get the money and unlock the money from the account and, and, and get the money. And so by doing this, we sort of prevent the ability to front run transactions. Thanks for that explanation, Tyler. Yeah, and uh, so this was just a short sneak peek. Unfortunately, it's a little too much stuff to pack into five minutes. But if you're curious, I encourage you to check out libsubmarine.org. Uh, we're very proud of the web design. At least I am, although he thinks it's tacky. But um, 
yeah, uh, look at the details there. Uh, we have links to the papers, to the blog post, um, and all of our code is open source, no token required. Uh, check it out on GitHub. Um, and yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe, message us on Twitter, uh, whatever other forms of outreach people usually encourage. Um, and finally, there will be a talk by our two colleagues that we mentioned before, Shayan Eskandari and um, Stefan Goslin, at um, the next session, I think the privacy session at four something. Yeah, go check it out. They will talk about how easy it is to actually take your existing contract and upgrade it using LibSubmarine to proof it against front running.